Okay, I'm going to explain these two large social, political, religious, ideological groups that we have in America. And, uh, th th of course, there are smaller groups, of course, that, that goes without saying. Religion and politics and economics and social philosophy are all somewhat being conflated more and more into the same uh, type of worldview, which actually is, is part of maturity because we are holistic people. Society is a holistic thing. And just how a body is either healthy overall or unhealthy overall, so is it the same with with all of society. So you know, religion and politics and economics and social philosophy and our other ideologies, they all really affect each other. So, I mean, you don't have a peeing section in a pool. You have an idea, uh, it affects everything. So where do we want things to go? I, I, I suppose you could say we've got people who want the, uh, you know, so you have a swimming pool. We could have a swimming pool that's kept clean by using chlorine or a swimming pool that's kept clean by using hydrogen peroxide. Those are two ways of keeping a pool clean. They, I suppose they both have cons and pros, although I think one of them is clearly better than the other. But one of them is more normal. Okay, but, you know, it's one or the other, though. You, you can't have both. And so we have these two ideologies fighting and one's trying to say we're the healthy better one and the other's trying to say we're the healthy better one. Well, what are they? I'm going to explain what they are and where I think things are going. But I'm going to put this in in the group you've you've got this you've got a core Christian group. And then you've got what I'm just going to call the non-Christian group. Like you could call it extra Christian or outside of Christian and I don't want to label them. But when I say Christian, I do not mean Sunday morning. And I suppose it could include Sunday morning, but the, the problem with saying that, the problem with making Christian equal to Sunday morning is in John chapter 3, Jesus was, Christian, Christian thinking is based on the Bible. So when, when we talk about Bible, we're not talking about what non-Christians should do. I mean, if someone doesn't believe in the Bible, then they shouldn't have to obey it. And that, that's a, you know... I mean, oftentimes I'll complain about people not obeying the Bible, but if you pay attention, I'm only talking about Christians not obeying the Bible. If non-Christians don't obey the Bible, I don't care. That's, that's fine. It, but if you're going to say you're Christian, then you believe that the Bible is the book that guides your life. It's your moral compass. You better obey it or stop saying that you, you want to obey it. You know, make up your mind. You know, I, if you're, if you're non-Christian, uh, it, it's up to you. You're, you're, you're inventing your own, you know, uh, metaphysical uh, theory of, of where life is and comes from. You're, you're totally on your own with that. So if you want to obey the Bible or not, if you're non-Christian, I don't, I don't care. That, that, that's great. That's fine. Tell me how it works for you. Um, but but with, with Christian, the Christian worldview is based in the Bible. So we've got John chapter 3. Jesus is talking to Nicodemus and he, he says, the wind blows... Wherever it goes, no one knows where it comes from or where it's going. And so it is with people who are born of the wind. Now, the word for spirit and wind is the same word, pneuma. And that's uh, what he's talking about. When he says born of the wind, he means born of the spirit. Uh, in, in Greek, we, they wouldn't say holy ghost, holy spirit. They would say holy wind. And Jesus, uh, you, know, you have to um, uh, be born again in in uh, in truth and in wind, truth and in spirit. Uh, the Bible in New Testament would say, love people in truth and in spirit, which would be in truth and in wind. Okay, so Jesus said, people that are born of the wind, born of the spirit, are just like the wind. No one knows where they're coming from or where they're going. Well, Sunday morning is this incredibly regular, incredibly boring, incredibly repetitious thing. So if you've got a Christian who thinks that he has to be part of this be at the same address every single week and be incredibly predictable and everybody knows where I'm going and where I came from. Uh, that's not, that's not what Jesus is talking about. Okay. So that's one problem. It's, it's, it's why I skate Sunday morning. You know, I'm, I'm into Sunday morning skate. I, I don't, I don't, my Christianity is, is not, I don't have this hyper rigid routine. Jesus didn't. So why would people who follow him have one? Okay. All right. So, um, We've we've got we've got core Christians though whether they're Sunday morning or not, hopefully not, 
because that that'd be more in line with Bible teaching rather than with just this subculture. Then we've got another sect of society, and as you've you know a lot of this is pro Bernie Sanders, uh, formerly Obama enthusiasts, absolute anti-Trump group. Now, this group has a massive, massive contradiction, and I'm going to tell you what that is. They supposedly hate these elites. There are these elites. It's, it's, the, it's the top uh, 1% of the top 0.1%. Okay, so we've got this, this top percentage of people that are supposedly controlling everything, uh, often associated anyway with companies like Monsanto or Big Pharma or, you know, big something or other. And, and they're trying to control the whole world. Okay, but um, they're the ones who are behind, uh, uh, well, the, the, this caravan uh, marching through Mexico. They're the George Soroses of the world that are funding all kinds of money to uh, like the, these Occupy movement things. Uh, where do they get their money from? Uh, or it's, it's not just Soros, there's a whole bunch of them. These elites that the Bernie crowd hates are the people funding the Bernie crowd. It, it, it's, it's, it's like, you guys didn't get that figured out? And another big thing, look, I, I, I didn't want to get controversial. I, there's nothing I can say at this point where some, someone's not going to hate me. So please hear all of what I say so you at least hate me correctly. I believe that I believe in ongoing climate change. I believe in taking steps to be as efficient as possible with everything we do, including resources, but other stuff also, including time. I believe in having a clean world. I don't like trash floating around outside. And I don't, li I don't like it in the yard, in the street. I don't like it in the air. I don't like trash. I'm over here in Asia and trash in the air is a big problem. So, I mean, you got to have an air filter so that you don't get sick and you don't have black stuff all over your stuff all the time. I, I mean, I, I have to cover up my microphone to keep the filth from the air off of it. I don't like that. And me not liking that doesn't mean that I'm a tree hugging eco weenie that's bought hook, line and sinker this global warming stuff. So it's like, this is, this is one of my critiques of Rush Limbaugh. Big Rush Limbaugh fan, but I don't like Rush ignoring the people who don't like garbage in the air. I mean, there's this point where you got to be able to want to get the garbage out of the air without falling into the love the earth and we're all going to die tomorrow cult. So it's like, come on, man. It's like, where's the representative of the smart people? Like the normal people. Okay, that's kind of what I think about this. I believe in this. So I, I believe in being clean and efficient and stuff. I mean, I, I don't like throwing stuff in the garbage. It just, I feel bad about it. It's not because I'm part of any cult. My father was the same way. He was a junk collector and he had all kinds of junk and he'd go take the junk. And then after he died, we took a bunch of the junk to the, to the junkyard and got a bunch of money for it. it that's efficient. That's stuff people would have thrown away. We made the economically smart thing. I, I just, we don't like waste. My father and I did not like waste. He, he had, he would collect wooden pallets and he would make beautiful furniture out of them because he didn't like being wasteful. How is that falling in love with the, the tree hugger? We're all going to die cult. Like, but Limbaugh doesn't have a category for that. And that's one of my critiques of Limbaugh. Okay, but uh, all right, uh, you know, whether Limbaugh actually agrees or not, I don't know, but I wish he'd say something about that. Okay, so I, I believe in ongoing climate change and I believe in being efficient, not throwing stuff away. All right. In that, I believe that as climate is going to continue to change by itself, we need to be as efficient as possible in order to survive the changes that are going to happen even without us. Now, yeah, you can go check out this YouTube channel, Suspicious Observers. Observers starts with the number zero because we're being cute with our spellings in this dot-com era. As of Web 1.0 world, we're still doing it in Web 
oh, and we're going to be doing it in Web 2.1 when we finally get all the inefficiencies kinked out and stuff. So go to Suspicious Observers and, and look at some key videos. They want to blame you and how to watch the sun. Check out this guy, Ben Davidson. The sun goes through these magnetic cycles and they get bigger and they get smaller and they, they last decades. And when you go to the through the, the zone where the sun's magnetism is lower, weather on the earth gets violent and crazy. Okay, well, we're headed into one of those. It's not us that there is change, but anthropogenic man made that, that that's a lot to prove. Like, like you'd have to have satellites in orbit and you'd have to have scientific stations all around the earth for at least 1 million years recording data. 1 million years there, 1 million years of the, the little thing, the needle spinning information on the paper. You'd have to have 1 million years of rolls of that in order to prove yes or no what difference man is making in the climate. That's a lot to prove. Is there a role? Yeah. Do we make stuff dirty? Yeah. Should we stop? Yeah. Are we the reason that all of the, the, the seas are raising and lowering and stuff? Uh, that's just a lot to prove, man. And the sun is playing a much bigger role. And the other planets in the solar system, they have much more violent changes that they're going through than Earth is. Earth is changing the least in the solar system. So if, if anything, that's an argument that humans have a lower impact. So, but it's like, let's be clean and let's prepare for what's going to happen anyway, but let's drop this garbage about how it's all our fault. And the solution is to join the Microsoft Bill Gates cult and kill 6 billion people or however other way he's planning on getting the population from 8 billion to 2 billion since that's his goal. All right. So like, how can anyone buy windows anymore with Bill Gates saying this kind of stuff at Ted talks? Like that's, that's weird. That, 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 that's, that's like weird, man. Like that's, that's not just Osberger. That's like weird. That's really, really weird, Bill. That's weird. So, we, so we've got this, this, this we, we've got Christians, and then we've got these non-Christians who have this massive contradiction. Uh, Christians uh, are accused of having contradictions. The biggest contradiction of Christians is, is thinking that Sunday morning equates to Christianity. A lot of them believe that. That's a massive contradiction right there. And then another big contradiction with Christians is that they don't like central planning and government because they tend to be Republican or conservative or something like that. But because Republican isn't conservative all the time, but Christians say that they don't want central planning and all this big government control, but they want that big control on Sunday morning with their Christian stuff. That massive contradiction there. Lots of they, 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 they say that um, that we need to have uh, free will, but then they want to have non-Christians obey their Christian rules through law. It, it's like we need to have good laws, but you don't legislate people into behaving like Christians when they don't want to be. And that happens. And where's the line in that? Well, that's another discussion. But you've got contradictions in the Christian group, I'll admit. I'm, I'm Christian, but there's lots of contradictions in the, in the greater community there, in the large sect, which I probably don't fit the bill with. And then you've got non-Christians who have a massive contradiction because they love the Bernie Sanderses of the world and they hate these phantom elites, even though the people that are the stereotype that Bernie Sanders is preaching against are the ones that are funding all the causes that they're in love with, including the, 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 the climate change cult. And the climate change cult is, we're all going to die. <laughs> Elysium, the movie, is going to be real. We have to suffer all the time and kill our technology and reduce the population to 2 billion. I'm talking about that cult, okay? Not just the let's be clean and responsible uh, thinking. So we've got these, these two massive groups. All right. Well, here's what's going to happen. Uh, if you, you've hung in this long to me explaining these ideas, here, here's what's going to happen. The Christian group what's, I, I'm Christian, I love Jesus, I pray, and, you know, people, people try to get in arguments with me about, um, you know, whether the Bible's legitimate and so forth, and like, well, Ravi Zacharias and Josh McDowell 
and Lee Strobel have already completely unequivocally proven the credibility there. If you want to have that argument, go read those books. There are people much better qualified than I to explain what's obvious with that. You don't need to have that argument with me if your goal is to find out truth because other people can explain it better. Arguing with me would only serve the purpose of trying to attack me or something. This isn't about me. So you want to have a discussion about whether the Bible's credible. Uh, there, there, that's been proven. Lee Strobel, Josh McDowell, Ravi Zacharias, Albert Moeller, great places to start. Um, I mean, the Old Testament, 17,000 documented academic manuscripts. Uh, New Testament, 24,000. Uh, the, the, the third most documented writing is, Il, is Omer's Iliad in the fourth is uh, Plato's cave with three witnesses. And which one of these are we teaching as absolute fact in school? Come on. You, you know, so, you know, there are some differences in the manuscripts, but not contradiction and no change of, of any substantive meaning. So it's, it's just, it's absolutely amazing. I mean, the, 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 the church fathers um, were the, 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 the first, second, third generation after the New Testament people. And, and they actually, the first of them actually knew the people in the New Testament. And then the next generation knew those guys. And the third generation knew those guys. You could take their sermons alone and recreate the entire writings of the New Testament because it was so widely known. So how were these sayings from the New Testament time fake and made up if they, if, if, if the, if this, the actual content of it was so widely known and agreed upon by so many people. I mean, there was no question about what it actually said in that time. You can't say that it was made up. And then, then now there's another question. If, if there was so much undisputed agreement in, in people in and right after the New Testament time, we're talking about, you know, the, the first, second, third centuries. If, if in that time everybody agreed on what the New Testament was saying, I mean, you could recreate the entire New Testament from just the sermons of the church fathers alone without any New Testament manuscripts, and they would agree. So if we've got really a document that's really 2,000 years old, and it was so agreed upon in that time, then if it was a lie, wouldn't there have been more agreed upon literature from that era saying that it was a lie? And the only place you can go to try to argue with this would be to say that the Catholic Church is so evil that they're just horrible and wanted power that they made it up and, and rewrote history. That's a lot of fakery. I mean, if the Catholic Church was able to completely fake all this, we need to find out how they did that because they've got some brilliant ability to be able to hack anything. That, that's, we need to like hire them. to like NS, if, if the Catholic Church really made up New Testament stuff, NSA needs to go hire them to figure out how to, to fake and plant evidence so that, that, that American can defeat their, or I, I don't know. It's like, that, that, that's a lot. But no one's arguing for that because it's just searching for an excuse. So I'm, if you want to go have that debate, uh, Lee Strobel, Ravi Zacharias, Josh McDowell, Albert Moeller, go do that on your own. Uh, Moeller has an H in it, the L-O-H-E-R, I do believe. Um, nice man. Had, had a brief chat with him once. And, and Ravi, although the other two guys I haven't met. Um, we've got, we've got, these, we've got these, these two groups. We've got this Christian group and, and uh, let's see, I'm getting my hands here mixed up. We've got this Christian group and then we've got this, this, this Bernie, like, like we hate the elites, but we'll be caught up in all of the things that they're caught up in crowd. Okay. Here's what's been happening with the Christian group. You, you've hung in this long. Here's what's happening with the Christian group. The Christian group has been held back by heaven. Uh, and now, if you're one of the Christians who thinks that you've got to do Sunday morning to love Jesus, I've got news for you. I'm talking Jesus. I'm talking about the, 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 the five basics, all the doctrinal statements, uh, that's that heaven, the heaven where Jesus is, where John had his vision, God, his throne, the angels, Jesus, they have been holding back Christians. Jesus has wanted this. 
typically if you take seeds like flower seeds or corn seeds or something, you throw them in the ground, you know, the seeds are going to grow flowers, corn, you know, whatever it is you put in the ground. Well, let's, let, let's, let's take a, an example here of a, of a, of, of a shrub, of a bush, you know, like, like, um, you know, a hedge, you know, you get a bush in a garden and you trim it to make it look like something, right? And you prune it and it, and it, and it fills out and it's, it's a garden bushes and shrubbery. Okay. If, if Christian, if the, if Christians have been like a, a shrub that you prune and shape in a beautiful garden, heaven has been clipping and pruning them excessively and they're incredibly small. If left to themselves, they would be enormously big now. But God, heaven, Jesus, however you want to view it, has been pruning them. God's been sending angels to create extra unnatural trouble in their lives. God's been allowing demons also to create extra unnatural trouble in their lives to keep the results in their lives small. And what's been happening is they've been growing an incredibly deep, vast root system. It's hard to uproot. These things are strong, much stronger than they look for their size. And the, the trunk, the stem of this thing's gotten incredibly big and fat. It's really been growing even though the outward size seems small. It's also incredibly, incredibly healthy. It's, it can be hard to get rid of these things. They're incredibly strong. And God has been doing this, allowing, uh, intervening. God's been doing this for two reasons. One, to make them strong. Two, to make sure that the only people that were in this Christian group were the people that really, really believed it and were really, really dedicated to believing, you know, there's something going on here. I mean, I, I was mentioning before, people come to me and they, they try to argue history and, and evidence of the Bible. And, 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 and I say, wait a minute, my evidence of the Bible is praying for things. And I don't just mean life coincidences and stuff works out, although there's that. Uh, Muslims have the same thing happen with them. Uh, but I'm talking about like supernatural stuff, like praying for healing in the physical body. I'm talking about... Um, I'm, I'm talking about supernatural stuff and I, I, people try to argue theories with me about religion and I, I just don't go there. I'm like, no, I see, I'm getting a phone call and should I, no, I'm not going to answer this. I, I don't, I'm not going to answer this. Um, I get, um, I get people trying to debate stuff with me in theory and it's like, no, 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 miracles are bust. So argue with the miracles. That's where, that's where my argument with that stuff goes. So I, I'm not, I'm not into people that want to debate theories and ideas. I'm not, I don't really go there. The arguments are there, but that, that's not the strongest. So you've got these two Christian, you've got these group, you've got the Christian group and you've got this, this atheist non-Christian group. All right. Christians have been held back by God in heaven and the angels to keep them small and to keep them strong and also to test them to make sure that only the most convinced, most dedicated remain among their numbers. That's all about to change for the first time since Jesus was here on earth. For the first time since Jesus left, 2,000 years, God's going to stop doing that. And these bushes that have been over pruned are going to be allowed to grow and they're going to grow incredibly fast. Heaven is not intervening. Heaven is not showing them extra special favor. They're not getting extra special help from angels and Jesus and God and heaven. God's just allowing nature to run its course. God is simply going to allow normal work to pay off as it normally should for once. He hasn't been doing that. He's been keeping them small and strong and making sure that only the most dedicated of them were there. 
And now those who've hung in there all this time, 2,000 years of, of, of lines, excuse me, of, of, of you know, teachers teaching and they're dedicated and they teach their students that are dedicated and believe it even though the results seem small, but they're strong underneath where it matters. And in 2,000 years of generations of teaching like this, and here we are, and then through their lives, these are not recent converts. These are not, these are not red pill moment walkaway types. If you're, if you're doing red pill, you're going to be kind of part of it. If you're doing this red pill walk away movement, huge red wave thing, you've recently stopped being liberal. You're going to kind of see this stuff. But if you're walk away, those Christians that you used to be arguing with that you're not arguing with now, they're stronger than you because they've been growing in part of this. You walked away from them and you walked back or you've been arguing with them and just now walked away late in the game. The peep, the Christians who, who didn't have to walk away cause they got it and understood it from the beginning. They've been growing and being pruned for decades all that time. And we're going to see that pay off. The sooner you get on board, the better. They're going to start growing and it's going to be enormous. It's just going to be natural, normal life. Any of God's intervention or special favor has already happened. All that pruning to keep those Christians small was heaven's favor. Don't look at that preparation process as proof that it doesn't work. It still wasn't finished working yet. It was in progress. And now we're going to get a fast, special, quick sneak peek of what happens when people live out the Bible's plan, the real one, not the Sunday morning cult thing, but the it, now, people on Sunday morning can get the real Bible and maybe though they're wasting time or not, that's another discussion. But people who follow the, the core Bible way where, where God comes in and helps, they're going to be growing and we're going to see what that really looks like. Now, here's the catch. From the non-Christian group, the save and love your mother earth, let's hate the elites, but then let's get involved and support every piece of propaganda that those same elites that we hate are funding and let's be cheerleaders for all that stuff. That crowd, People are going to either be leaving it, like walk away. They're going to come in late in the game. And sorry, look, you know, you weren't growing for decades while the, the, while it was tough. So you're not going to have that solid root system underneath. You, you got to go in there for years for it to work. And, you know, people that, that show up early and do their work and exercise for a long time and eat right, you know, you don't, you don't get, get an awesome, healthy body overnight. So you come in late, you're welcome. We, we hope the best. We'll help you as fast as we can, but you know, people that are there early have a benefit for that. That's life. Some people are going to be leaving, coming into that, and they're going to want to grow as fast as we can. And when we die and get to the next life, things are going to be on a new level and it's going to be a whole reset and God's going to do what's right and fair and we're all going to love it. That's another story. But in this world, your work here is going to pay off in this world to whatever extent that it does. And some things are going to be delayed and life is going to be unfair to you to test your character and to prove how awesome or unawesome you really are. But then a lot of people are also going to stay in that crowd and they're going to be mad at all this growth these Christians have. They're going to be jealous of it. They're going to find some excuse to be angry about people living happy lives. They're not going to go want to be part of it. They're going to stay in that jealous group. They're going to stay with, with the elites that want to downsize the population to 2 billion. They're going to keep, oh, we love that. They're going to stay with the political ideology where they're going to abort the birth of their own children so that there isn't a next generation with their ideology and then they put themselves out of existence. They're going to be part, that group that puts itself out is going to stay there and they're not going to want to change and after a time of these Christians rising to this incredible level of respect among society, it'll be spooky at times. It'll be like, my goodness, those people have such respect. This is weird. It's going to really unsettle them. And they and their elites are going to hit back 
after 10, 20, 30 years in phases. And that is a mistake, a big mistake. I'm telling you this is coming now and I'm telling you if you're in that jealous group and you feel that desire to hit back at them, don't. Heaven kept those Christians down. They weren't down because of failure. They were down because of preparation. God was preparing them. And then what happened with their growth when God took his hand off and let them go, everything that happened after that was just natural normal. It wasn't favor. The favor happened when they were being prepared this way. And they're just going to grow normally. And that's available to anyone that wants it. Anyone can make wise choices and have, have the happy results of wise choices in their lives. Anyone can do that. Anyone's welcome to. Anyone. You. Anyone. If you're going to not join that but be jealous of it, oh, be careful. Everything that happened with them happened because heaven likes them. Heaven held them back and intervened that way. And then heaven stopped holding them back and just let them go and let nature run its course. Heaven likes them. Their, their results were not because of teaming up with you guys. If you're in that other group. If you hit back at them and you can knock them down. Heaven's not intervening so far. Heaven will let you prove who you, heaven's letting them prove who they are. Heaven's going to let these other guys prove who they are. But don't think that heaven's not watching. Don't think that heaven doesn't have power. And don't think that when those Christians die, whether by being murdered by this jealous group that can't get anything good done, or by naturally getting old and dying and going to heaven. Don't think that they aren't going to heaven with their own power. Hitting that group will be the last mistake that the people who hate that group will ever make. Because in hitting them, it's going to be Obi-Wan Kenobi getting struck down. They're going to go to a new level that is more powerful than anyone could possibly imagine. And the last thing you want to have to do is to deal with a Christian Obi-Wan Kenobi style force ghost. Hitting them back, you're going to be turning them into force ghosts. And then you're not going to know where they are or where they're going next. You're going to, say, you're going to promote them to spirit. Don't hit back. If you're right, if you're smart, don't turn the Jedi into force ghosts. Don't do it. But I think that people are going to try anyway. And that's the part that's sad.